Hello, dear class six students. Welcome back to our science class. Today we are going to discuss about lesson 13, okay? And the name of the lesson would be fun with magnets. So you can all turn to page 125, 125. So this is going to be a very interesting lesson because we are all familiar with magnets, right? When you were a small kid, okay? When you were little, you play with magnets, right? So let's see. So this is a magnet, dear students, you can see here. So a magnet, a magnet is something that attracts iron, that attracts cobalt, okay? And nickel, okay? So that means iron attracts, a, a magnet attracts iron, okay? A magnet attracts cobalt, a magnet attracts nickel. So magnet attracts metals, okay? Because all this iron, all this cobalt, nickel are metals, okay? So students, after this lesson, we will learn about how magnets, how magnet was discovered, okay? We will also learn about a permanent magnet and artificial magnet. We are going to learn about magnetic material and non-magnetic material, okay? And we are going to uh, do many activities, okay? We have many activities in this chapter, so you can all turn to your page, okay, uh, textbook, okay? You'll find many activities. Go through your textbook. We, uh, you will find many activities. And all the activities we will discuss here, okay? And we are also going to discuss about the direction, the direction of magnet and how to take care of magnet. So let's get started with our class. So students, magnet is very important. Magnet is used for many commercial purposes. We use magnet at home as well. Now, most commonly, we'll find magnet at home, we'll see at refrigerator. At refrig refrigerator, we will find magnet, right? When you try to close the door, you will see there's a magnet. And also, students, I'm sure you are all familiar with the stickers, right? That we paste in refrigerator. So there is a magnet. And in some instrument box, you will also see a magnet. When you try to close, you'll see a magnet. And students, this is a pin holder. Okay, this is a pin holder. And inside, you'll find a magnet. Inside this, you'll find this is a magnet. Okay, so now all the pins get attracted to this magnet. Okay, now, Magnets are also used for many medical purposes, okay, in medical field. So students, now we will discuss how these magnets were discovered, okay, how these magnets were discovered. So <clears throat> this story is, uh, this story, the, the story which I will tell you about how magnets were discovered, it's about a shepherd. Okay, it is about a shepherd named Magnus. M-A-G-N-E-S, Magnus. So he was a shepherd. And he lived in a town. He lived in a town called Magnesia. Okay, Magnesia. And that was in Greece. Okay, Greece is the name of a country. Greece. So the name of the town is Magnesia and the name of the country is Greece. So we have a shepherd named Magnus. So he is Magnus, okay? He is the shepherd. Now, one day, one day he took all, he took all his herds of sheep and goats, okay? He took all his herds of sheep and goats to a hilly site, to a mountain site, 
for grazing, for grazing. Now, dear students, but it is very difficult to control animals, right? Do you agree with me? It's very difficult. Now, even one, you, you have one or two dogs at home, but it is difficult to control them, right? Then just imagine a herd of sheep and goats. So he used, in order to control them, he used a stick. As you can see here, he used a stick, okay, to control the animals. As well as for support, he used the stick. Now, one strange thing about this stick, one strange thing about this stick is, on this side, on the one end, on the one end of the stick, there is an iron attached, okay? On the one end of the stick, there is an iron attached. So one day, one day, he was just, he took all his herds of sheep and goat and they were walking up to the mountainside. And a strange incident took place because he was not able to pull the stick. He was not able to pull the stick. Dear students, you know why? Because the stick was attracted to one rock. There was one rock where this stick was attracted to. Now, I have told you that on the one end of the stick, there is an iron attached, right? So this iron and the rock was attracted. And he was unable to free the stick from the rock. So he had to pull hard. And this, it was the first time that these things happened. So he was also shocked. And there were many people who were passing by, okay? And they were also shocked. So from there, the magnet was discovered. So that rock is considered to be a natural magnet. Okay? So the rock which got attracted to this iron was considered to be a natural magnet because it was not man-made. It was found naturally. And, and so, and so that rock was called as natural magnet and they named that uh, natural magnet as magnetite. Okay, magnetite. M-A-G-N-E-T-I -E. So they gave the natural magnet a name magnetite. So magnetite is the, some says that magnetite is derived from the name of the town because the name of the town was Magnesia, right? And some believe that the name uh, magnetite was derived from the name of the shepherd because the name of the shepherd was Magnus, right? So magnetite is a natural magnet. So magnet, okay, the word that we study today, magnet is derived from the word magnetite. Clear? Okay, now dear students, now I want to ask you, do magnets attract all types of object? Do magnet attracts all type of object. Now everyone at that time was surprised because they discovered this magnet, right? And we know that that rock was attracted to the iron. But do magnet attract all types of object or it attracts only iron? So many people were curious, okay? So I'm sure you are also curious to know about it. So we can certainly, we can do an activity. We can do an activity. You can take a stick, okay? You can take a stick 
If you have a hockey stick, that's much better. Okay? If you have a hockey stick, that's better, but you can take a stick and on the one end of it, now, okay, unlike Magnus, you remember, right? Magnus the shepherd, he tied, he attached iron in one end of the stick. But for us, what we will do? For us, let's attach a magnet on the one end of the stick. Okay, let's attach one magnet on one end of the stick. And let's do the activity, okay? We'll just touch with the help of that stick. We will touch the object, different, different object, and we'll see what things get attracted to that, to that magnet, okay? So I'm sure you will try this activity, okay? So students, now, if you try with all this object, do you know what will happen? Now, this is a metal chain, a metal key, okay? This is a metal key, it can be a metal chain as well. So now, students, with the help of that stick, okay? With the help of that stick where we have attached the magnet, we will be able to attract this key, right? But what about these books? Will magnet attract this book? No, right? Then what about this pencil? Will the magnet attract this pencil? No. What about this bottle? A plastic bottle? No. Right? So students, you have got a rough idea about what, uh, about the magnetic material and non-magnetic material. So students, from this activity, we have learned about magnetic material and non-magnetic material. So when we say magnetic material, okay, when we say magnetic material, these are the materials, okay, these are the materials which are attracted towards the magnet, okay? Now let me repeat it, magnetic material are the material which are attracted towards the magnet. Just like that key that we have discussed just now, the metal key. Or it can be a needle, okay? It can be a needle. Or it can be a pin, a paper clip. Okay? Now, pencil, books, and this, plastic cup, they will not attract a magnet, right? So material which are not attracted towards a magnet are called non-magnetic material. So dear students, I'm sure you are clear with magnetic material and non-magnetic material, right? So this is very important. And you should also be able to give examples of magnetic material and non-magnetic material. Okay? And just like the activity which we have discussed, I'm sure you will try, okay? I'm sure you will try this activity. Just take the stick and on the one end attach a magnet and try to touch the objects around you. So whatever object gets attracted or gets stick towards the magnet, those are magnetic material. And if you touch a certain object and that object does not stick to the magnet, then it is not attracted, right? Then those are non-magnetic material. Okay? Now students, now Boju is your friend, right? Boju. So, Boju has this question for you, okay? Boju has this question for you. And I'm sure you will all help your friend, Boju. Now here, dear students, what can you see? You can see a button, a thread, a needle, right? 
a thread and needle. You are all familiar with this. So once there was a tailor, okay, I'm sure you are familiar with tailor, right? We have discussed about that, a tailor. So one day there was a tailor and he was teaching, he was teaching a button on his shirt. Okay, what was the tailor doing? The tailor was stitching a button on his shirt. Now suddenly, this needle, it slipped and fell on the ground. Now the tailor was maybe an old person, so it must have been a difficult for him to find that needle. So will you help the tailor? So that is the question Boju is asking you. So dear classic students, you are all kind and wise and smart students. And I know you will help that old tailor, right? So how you will help? The answer is very simple. Dear students, we can use a magnet and wrap around the floor. When you rub around the floor, we know that this needle is a magnetic material. That means which are attracted towards the magnet. So the needle will get attracted towards the magnet. And we can give and we can hand over this needle to the tailor. Right? Okay. Now students, our next topic is a natural magnet and artificial magnet. Now. The natural magnet we have already uh, we have already studied. We have discussed about the natural magnet, right? We discussed how it was discovered as well, right? So natural magnet example would be magnetite. Okay, magnetite. So I'll show you here. This is a natural magnet. And the name of this magnet is magnetite. Okay? Now, students, natural magnet, they are found naturally. Okay? They are found naturally. But I'm going to show you another magnet. That is artificial magnet. And this artificial magnet is what we see every day. So this artificial magnet is a main mate. Main mate. And the artificial magnet, students, we find in different size. So let's discuss about all this. The name of all these artificial magnets are very important. So this it's the most common one that you see. This is called a bar magnet. A bar, okay? B-A-R, bar magnet. And now you can see this second magnet here. It's a cylindrical shape, right? So it's a cylindrical magnet. Now, the third magnet that we see here, it looks like a horse shape, a horseshoe shape, right? So yes, this third magnet here, the third artificial magnet that we see, it is also called a horse shoe magnet. Okay? And the last here we see, the last artificial magnet that we see here, it's also called as a ball and a magnet. A ball, because it looks like a ball, right, on the two sides. So these are artificial magnets. And students, you know, artificial magnet have more magnetic force than the natural magnet. Okay, and these are main met. So students, from today's class, I'm sure you will be able to differentiate between artificial magnet and natural magnet. You will also be able to differentiate between the magnetic material and non-magnetic material. And if someone tell you to explain the story of how magnet was discovered, I'm sure you'll be able to tell. 
So since this is a long chapter, we have divided this chapter into parts. Okay? So students, that is all for today. See you in the next class with part two, fun with magnets. Thank you.